Hi, welcome back to Celebrating Culture. We're here today at the American Italian Cultural Museum in New Orleans, Louisiana, and I'm with Patrick Campisi, who is a fifth generation Sicilian into America. Patrick, welcome to the show. Thank you, Nat. pleasure to be here. So Patrick, tell me, uh, your family seems like they came about the time mine did. Tell me about your family coming over from Sicily. Yeah, so my great-great-grandparents, Vincenzo and Gaetano, they came from Poggio di Sicily in 1891, 1893, within that range. It was two brothers and one of their wives came over as farmers. And it was a one-way ticket. It was, I think, the Department of Immigration gave them a ticket and said, hey, you come to a farm over here. If you don't like it, they couldn't go back. Kind of sucks. You got to you got to stay here. So they ended up farming on Godshaw Plantation, which is south of Everville, where I'm originally from. They farmed there for about 20 or so years. And then in the early 1900s, probably like 1920s or so, they ended up moving up to Bayagula. They did that so they could start to own land. They didn't want to be laborers the rest of their lives. They wanted to become tenant farmers. Bayagula actually has a marker about Tanti. Yes. And he was the guy, the first Italian, 1682, comes into Louisiana. Tell me about your connection to this church. Ever since the Campisis were in Bayagula, that was the church they went to. And that church was actually built by Italians. If you look on the inside of the church, the roof, it's got the Italian flag. It's really worn and really faded, but it's still there, red, white, and green. But I was one of the last people baptized in that church. So they started working there until 1927, the flood came in. And that ran them out of where they were originally there. And then in 1929, the stock market crashed and every, the Great Depression happened. And they ended up going further south into White Castle, where my family's been ever since, on Laurel Ridge Plantation. They originally were asked to buy the plantation, but we had no money. So they ended up working there from 19. 29 until about 1974, I believe. They were sugarcane harvesters. Yes, exactly. So they're swinging the blades. Yep, they were swinging the blades, exactly. So that was my great great grandparents started that. My great grandfather, Joe, Joseph, he brought the whole family to Low Ridge, and that's whenever the Campisis started farming there, the 1929, 1930s. My grandfather was born in 1925. His name is Ross Campisi. In about the 1940s, he took what he learned from farming from Papa Joe and everybody else in the family, and he ended up going a little bit further south at White castle to a place called Cannonburg, and he created some business deal where he would get that extra land for our family so that we could farm that and hopefully get out of where we were of just that little lot of land on Lower Ridge. From there, my grandfather Ross just started getting as much acreage as he could to farm. So we're talking Donaldsonville, mm -hmm. Port Allen, Plaquemine. All the way up to New Roads as well. Through the course of him being a, a farmer, he ended up meeting a lot of other people and he met a man named Arthur Keller. There's a company named Arkell, which is named after him, construction company. And Arthur Keller worked with LSU to teach agricultural practices abroad, internationally, in South America, Central America, even in Africa. And he worked with my grandfather, would send him as a consultant to teach these third world countries the practices that they had in agriculture and farming, bringing sugarcane to these areas. My grandfather actually was the first person to bring sugarcane to the Rio Grande Valley. He ended up finding out through like the bill of sale that one of the companies that was shipping materials down to where he was farming was across the river from where he was in Carville. So White Castle is right across the Mississippi from Carville. And he ended up going to the plant manager over there and trying to work out a deal with them how to save them money, but also to get some extra work for them. And he started doing maintenance work on the, the plant grounds. That was about 1967 or so. And over the course of a few years, he went from maintenance work there to providing labor for some jobs they needed. And next thing you know, he's providing labor across the country in chemical plants, repairs, maintenance, anything like that. I mean, that's really the Sicilian, Italian, American dream. Yeah. As you come over, the first generation was moving the blades, cutting the sugar cane. And by the third generation, you got a business going. And then it just starts to grow from there. One of the core values that was in instilled in my grandfather, which is instilled in his father and so on throughout the entire family down to me, was always work for the family. You want to make sure the family is fed. When my grandfather was a farmer, all of my cousins, so his nephews, nieces, even his cousins, he was giving them a job in some capacity, either on the farm or in the maintenance work. He was providing. My grandfather worked seven days a week. He said his hobby was working. <laughs> he really never took a day off, never went in town, had a drink. He wanted to make sure the family was taken care of. My grandfather, they had a lot of livestock, cattle and horses. He ended up having his own cattle brand Crescent K. With one of his horses, he loved horses. He actually got a signed letter from George W. Bush thanking him for his contribution to that association and that community. One of his favorite horses he named Miss in Cash. And he had always had a hat because he always seemed to be missing cash. Growing up from the Great Depression, my grandfather always wanted to make sure that he had enough for him, but especially for the family. You recently attended the uh, St. Joseph Altar and Jazz yes, Fest. I did. And we had a gentleman there named Morris Vaccarella. And he's also got the same history as well. 
and I'm with Morris Vaccarella, whose grandfather cut sugarcane. Morris, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Charles. This is my grandfather, Frank Vaccarella, who was actually born on the Oak Lawn Manor Plantation around Franklin, Louisiana. Grew up and later became a field worker at the Alice C Plantation in Franklin, Louisiana. These are his knives that he cut sugarcane by hand during that time period. Out there, he also met my grandmother who hauled the water from the wells out to the field workers during the day. 1922, after they got married, my grandmother, Bina Mangano, my father, Morris Vaccarella Sr., was born in a workhouse without utilities in the field at the Alice C. Plantation. Back then, you had the baby, and then maybe in a week or two, you went to the hospital, or went to the doctor and had it checked out, and you had a birth certificate given to you. Morris, I understand you have a saying when, when th times are tough, or you had a long day. I remember shaking my hands with my grandfather. His hands was like calluses. It's hard work that he put out, out in the field. So when I'm sitting at my desk and I have this on the wall behind me, and I look at this and see what he went through, I'm saying, what are you whining about? Look at the life that he had to go through so you can be where you are today. Morris, I wanna thank you for bringing us out today. We're starting a fundraising project to raise money to create a monument here to the Sicilian sugarcane harvester. It'll be about 12 feet tall. It's gonna be by Franco Alessandrini. What do you think of the design? Oh, it's beautiful. It shows the working relationship that they, they had in the field, that it wasn't just easy sitting on a tractor, driving down and let it do all the work. They had to physically get out there with their sweat, with their blood and cut it and haul it. What they went through, we benefited from. Morris, I want to thank you for being on the show. Thank you, and Charles. Thank I really you appreciate and your it. For their legacy. You are the vice president of a St. Expedite Lodge. Yes, I am. Tell me about that. So I'm the vice president of St. Expedite Lodge with Max Nasser. He is the president of our lodge. And we are everything south of Alexandria in Louisiana. And I'm also in charge of the Young Adelian Professionals Club, which is associated with that. And what we're really trying to do is just preserve the Sicilian and Italian culture and contributions to Louisiana, but also to connect Italians, younger generation, fifth generation like myself or other generations, connect them like they had when they first came over here. Everybody was a community that's kind of dissipated. We want to bring that back. So if someone wants to know more, is there a website or a Facebook page? We have a Facebook page, St. Expedite LA. And you recently had some activities. Last week we were at Hayride Scandal, which is a really cool prohibition themed bar, celebrating Italian Republic Day. And that was kind of the first kickoff of the St. Expedite Lodge, as well as the Young Italian Professionals. And next week we actually have our first Young Italian Professionals dinner at Gino's in Baton Rouge. Patrick, I want to thank you for being on the show. The younger generation is bringing a new means with social media and other ways to connect Italians to appreciate our heritage. So thank you for all you're doing. Thank you. Here. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with more of Celebrating Culture.